So I picked up a flex vat from Move 3D, uh, the smaller one, the 180 millimeter vat. Uh, you can take a look on their website to, to get more information about it. Uh, pretty much this is a vat that's got acrylic sides and it's got an acrylic bottom and then it's got a piece of FEP that has been laser cut to fit these hold down posts and that's sitting on top and that's been tensioned down by these black things here um, pulling it really tight. So this is a, a drum head flex vat of a design that has a uh, backing. Uh, this is somewhat similar in, in overall concept to the vat that, uh, that, that T. Dixon designed. What I'm going to do now is, is install it kind of into the tight vat. This, this is a bit of a challenge. I had to, because I like to print big, if you were printing small and we were using the small build plate, uh, you could just use it right off the bat. But I am a big sized printer, and so I wanted to print with uh, the maximum area available. And since our build plates are designed for 190 millimeters, they don't fit into this, into this vat. So I cut a sloped build plate, it's 170 millimeters, that fits here nicely. And I'll put that on here. The reason why I'm putting it on first before I align the vat is that I wanna make sure that I have this vat positioned properly. I don't have the, the convenience of simply going up against the pre-measured post that exists with the Kudo 3D stock vat. And so I'm running the calibration grid and I'm going to kind of move the vat so that I can get the grid in the, in the frame reasonably centered. And that probably will end up putting me have some place like this and then I'm going to lower the build plate to make sure that I clear this otherwise I'll have to reposition the build plate a bit there's a bunch of screws at the bottom of the flex vat also and since the, there are screws in the top of our, of our printer, we gotta make sure that we don't, um, we, we, sit, we sit flat. So this looks reasonably good. Looks like I'm bumping against, you can probably see here, I've got, I've got the front screw here, and then there's a screw post here, and I've kind of bump, I'm bumping the, uh, the, the head of this screw against the post here. And then I am getting this part here, this end here flush against the T slot. And that seems to provide me with clearance and access to the, the build plate. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, clamp that in in this position. I have three clamps. So I'm gonna put one here. And you get the clamp. Basically, I had to take all the walls off and I will be clamping the So that one's down. And then I've got a second clamp. I'm gonna put that clamp, roughly speaking, over here. So I'm gonna use, I have a couple of different, I have to use a smaller one here so it doesn't impede my,
this, these two might actually be enough. I probably don't need any more clamps, but because I can, I'll put the third one in. Since three points define a plane. So that's not, that's not going anywhere now. All right, and then I'm going to need zero the bill plane. The process is, is similar to what we do with, uh, with the regular with the regular build plate, except that when I'm right level, it's much more positive because there's, it's totally rigid underneath. I can feel when I move down a 10th at a time when I'm, when I'm totally solid. And then I can take a look here and see where I am, where am I with respect to the grid. Looks like I'm losing about a centimeter here. Nothing I can really do about that. And uh, I'm barely clearing some of the barely clearing some of the sealant here. So let's see here. There we go. So now I can feel that it's positive, but I want to, I gently nudge down to it. I've done this before, so that's why I, I've done it in so few steps. That way you don't put too much pressure on the vat. Now this is a pretty thick piece of acrylic, uh, so you probably can't crush it, um, but it would be good not to, not to stress it too much. You want to get a good amount. A couple of things to watch out for. This isn't the first time I've done it. Um, I did it a couple of tries before videoing it. Um, but while it, before I put any resin in the vat, it'll be easy, easier to explain. This vat is about as close to an immortal vat as you can have. Uh, it's 200 bucks, uh, so it's worth more than three of the, of the PSPs. The vat is also not I would say it's not super ideal for large prints. I'm going to do a, a large print as a, as a trial run just to show you. Um, and because that's the way that I, I put new parts through their paces through my set of, of, cal of, of kind of flat bottom calibration parts. But the, when we do a lift sequence, right, um, it's going to pull the, pull the, uh, the part off the bottom of the vat. Normally in a regular PSP, as we pull up, the PSP itself is the most flexible part of the entire system. And so when we pull up, the flexible end moves, right? And so the, the, the part that has the most, uh, uh, most distance to go is here. And this end here is the free end of our vat. And that's why it flexes, but that's not that's not the only reason. It also happens to be the furthest away from the linear stage. And so forces along here have a lever effect on the linear stage, um, which we don't see in the PSP because the VAT is so flexible compared to the linear stage. But this linear stage here on our back plate is not super, super rigid. Um, it's not CNC cutting steel and aluminum grade rigid. And so what happens is, this forces on this end tend to deflect the linear stage more than forces on this end, which are you know, closer to the linear stage, much less of this lever effect, right? Because this long thing is one big lever. Um, the flex vat releases the most and releases first, flexes the most rather, right dead in the, in the middle in the drum head compared to our, our PSPs, which flex the most in the part that is likely to cause the most strain on our linear stage. And so if I pull a really big surface area, 
and I'm doing the release cycle, right? The middle of the part will release first, right? Right here, and I'm in, in pretty good alignment that the middle of the build plate is pretty much the middle of the vat. This far end of the vat here, it releases the least well, right? It's got the least amount of flex. It's, it's the equivalent of, right? The perimeters are the equivalent of the fixed end of the vat where there's more separation force. And that means that as I lift, as I'm overcoming those separation forces, I can actually cause the linear stage to bend a bit because my stage is pretty powerful. Um, my vat is pretty rigid. Uh, this, the T-slot frame is pretty rigid. It's held down pretty strong. And so this part here is gonna bend a bit. Um, and this is where T. Dixon's uh, Kudo 3D specific custom design that attaches through the normal attachment point here and has a plastic on metal design such that if there's a lot of flex, the plastic part will flex a bit, it wouldn't be totally rigid, is good for the Titan one. Uh, in this case, I would say if you're gonna do a really challenging print, you're probably better off with the PSP because um, uh, because your, your um, uh, um, heavy duty lifts are going to are going to deflect the linear stage and the linear stage is going to pop back um, but and, and I can you can measure the linear stage and see how straight it is um, and I'm totally straight 90 degrees right so I haven't you're not gonna you're not gonna easily damage this stage uh, but it will you'll see it bend. Uh, and we may, um, this is the first time using PR48, we may see it, well, we may not. Um, so we're ready to go here. I've got the So I'm going to now Probably shouldn't have shaken it up that much. Anyway, so I've got the PR48 here. I'm gonna pour it in. That is very wide, so it holds a lot of resin, um, but it does mean also that it takes a while to spread out. Overall, I think the larger overall volume may be a benefit for large prints. So maybe if you have a smallish print closer to, you know, um, the size of the small build plate, building really tall and dense, um, you could possibly build something without having to, having to, uh, to, uh, to refill the resin as much. And I think it's easily possible that, that with a flex vat design, because you want flexing, that you probably want the vat to be substantially larger than what you are printing. Um, the print I'm gonna do now where I'm printing pretty close to the, the size of the vat itself is in printing, and thus printing way out to the edges, it's probably not the ideal ideal shape for this so waiting for this to run all right so put resin in the vat
and then we are going to come down to zero. Okay. The whole thing's pretty clear, so I can see pretty well underneath that. Um, don't know if you noticed that even the the release from the the vacuum forces cause the nose to tip down a little bit. I'll show you that again. Now you're seeing that even the, the vacuum release forces, because this arm here, right, it's not totally rigid, it has some motion. The vacuum release way at the end here, and I could probably optimize this by moving it forward a tad, but you can see that even without printing, that I'm deflecting, right? I'm deflecting the uh, the arm just a tad, and this action would of course be less pronounced if uh, once I get out of the resin and then once I am printing more silently on the center. But uh, all right, those cycles have gotten rid of the large bubbles. This is the PR48. And I'm using, I'm using some pretty gigantic lifts here. These are the same lifts that I used when I originally printed calibration parts. Um, and I'm going to be using the same lift, uh, same settings, um, which means you're gonna see this, this humongous seven millimeter lift that we probably won't need. Uh, probably virtually impossible to have a seven millimeter lift uh, because this system is so rigid.